Live from the chicken wing capital of the world, <laughs> Buffalo, New York. You're listening to the Child Care Bridge Podcast, your source for the best tips, tools, and tactics on how to market and grow your child care center, ensuring total domination. Total domination. This is the Child Care Bridge, and this is your host, Michael Tasner. Hey there, and welcome to this week's episode of the Child Care Bridge. Today's topic is all about what I call Jumpstart July. So I like to film these very, very close to when they go live. And the reason that I like to do that, rather than just sitting and doing 20 podcasts in a day or two and then spacing them out for several months at a time, is that things change. The market changes. Industry events happen. Interest rates change if you're looking to acquire, for example, and take out a loan. Staffing, like there's a lot of changes that occur on a regular basis. The marketing game is heavily changing and will continue to change as we get closer and closer to an election. But this concept of Jumpstart July is something that I've been talking about for at least five years. And it's the concept around how can you make sure that you are overly prepared, that you're ready to capitalize on what traditionally is the best time for getting new enrollments to your center. And that aggregately across all of the centers that we work with, all of the seasonality, taking out any outliers. So for example, if you're only enrolling during a particular month, we remove all of that. August and September are the two best months for enrollment. Now they're followed by historically January being another good enrollment month where families go on vacation over the holidays and they're like, yeah, I'm not really overly in love with the center or the experience or the director or teacher or the location, whatever it is. And that tends to also be a really great enrollment month. But right now, a lot of centers are just starting to execute their summer camp. And if they're not executing a summer camp, they're just continuing on with traditional care and maybe doing a few extra fun things in the summer, but they're not calling it a summer camp and they're most likely not increasing the ages that can come in. And then obviously with that becomes capacity changes, et cetera. But if you only focus on summer camp the next 30, 60 days, and then August hits and September hits and you're banking on having two really great months. And those two really great months can often for a lot of centers, especially ones that have multiple locations, they can make or break the entire rest of your year. Because if you are planning on adding 100 enrollments, for example, over those two months and you bring in 30, that's going to be a pretty big issue. So unlike a lot of other industries where you can kind of forecast demand, let's say you're in the home services space, the polar opposite of childcare, you can start to forecast, hey, great, we're going to have a couple of big jobs. I might have to hire some extra freelancers or contract labor. Like you can start to easily kind of fill in and fit in those gaps. And you can do a little bit of that in the childcare space and go to temp agencies, and you can move some of the teachers around. So there are a few levers you can pull. But if you staff up and you have all these team members to take on 100 enrollments, and you end up getting 30, you're going to be in a really tough spot financially. You're paying all these wages, and you're way off your ratios, way off. So what are some things that you can do in the month of June and the month of July to get you ready for those two prime months? So the first thing is I want you to take like 15 steps back and to do what I call a marketing 360 audit. And that is where you're looking at everything that you've done over the last six to 12 months. What promotions, what tactics, what strategies, how much money have you invested each month in marketing? How many referrals are you getting? And then looking at all of the different marketing methods and tactics. Are you offline marketing, online, billboards, Facebook ads, Google ads, TikTok, content? What are you doing to generate awareness, leads, leads that result in tours and all of that stuff? 
you need to be able to quickly size up and look at unless you are looking at all of this stuff on a regular basis. And spoiler alert, most centers are not looking at this on a regular basis. And by regular, I mean at least twice a month. They're just not looking at the hard data. They're not looking at tour to enrollment ratios or lead to tours, lead to what I call an MQL, marketing qualified lead. So if you get in 100 leads, but 30 of them, you text, you email, you send multiple other messages, you try calling, you text them again, they're completely unresponsive and you've tried 10, 15, 20 times, I don't move them as a marketing qualified lead. So how many leads are you working with? And what ends up happening is this data is going to start to paint a picture for you. Are you doing enough to make sure that you hit those enrollment targets? And the chances of you doing enough are often slim. Now, I'm a realist. You're not paying me to give you a that a boy or a that a girl. And in fact, you're, you're not paying me. We're giving you lots of really good free content. But I would be doing you a disservice if I said you're going to have everything locked and loaded and you're going to magically attract 100 enrollments and all of them are going to come out of the sky and from a center closing that you didn't know was going to happen and then all those enrollments come over to you and it's just going to be great. I don't like leaving any of this stuff to chance. Nothing left to chance, nothing left to parent referrals. So I love referrals but I'm not going to stake my marketing. I'm not going to say, well, we know we're going to get 25 referrals in the month of August and September. So if we want to hit that 100 number, we only need to actually get 75. I'm not going to bank on any of that. So after you've done this marketing audit, this marketing 360, you've sized up what worked, what didn't work, how much did we invest? And you have to just be completely real with yourself. You're not doing yourself any good by sugarcoating anything. If you're like, we wanted to add another 50 enrollments by where we are now and we only invested $500 a month in marketing, you've got that data. Okay, great. So can you just continue doing what you were doing and know that there might be a little bit of a bump due to seasonality? Yes, you could. But if you don't want to leave things to chance, then you need to look at all of that data. And what do you need to start getting ready in this Jumpstart July? So I like to have a lot of content ready to go. Short little videos for Facebook Reels, for Instagram posts, TikTok videos. I like to have hundreds of pictures of all of the kids that you've already got slips that you're allowed to leverage those images. I like to get a virtual tour using a software called Matterport done in the month of July so that if someone wants to look at your classrooms virtually or they're like, I just can't get there for another week. Is there any other way to see your center? You want to get those things done so that come August, you're already hitting the ground running. Now, the other thing that I love to do in the month of July is I like to redo a competitor analysis. Now, apples to apples comparison for most centers is not overly easy. It's not an apples to apples comparison if you're comparing, let's say you're a Montessori center and you're comparing yourself to a traditional daycare that's a fourth of a mile away. Montessori centers will garner a premium. If you have STEM or STEAM, if you have the ability to teach a second or even third language, there's a few trilingual schools that have been popping up. It's tough to compare apples to apples or a faith-based center versus a non-faith-based but I still need you to know how many centers are in the area around you and what does their capacity look like and trying to get a flavor as to how they're doing. Now, you're not going to cold call them and say, hey, how are you doing? And I can tell you that centers love to cold call each other and secret shop each other. And that happens more than you would think. So if you ever give an amazing tour and then the family completely ghosts you, it most likely was one of your competitors or the center sent in one of their friends or family to go in and secret shop your tour to see how things are going. Not suggesting you do that, but telling you it does happen more than you would expect. But all the information of capacity is readily available online. Doesn't hurt if you were to call and say, hey, I'm, I'm considering enrolling. Not sure how many spots you have open. And you would be surprised at how much information you can get just by asking that one question. But I, I want to know what is my competition looking like? And if everyone around me is somewhat close, 
so within a mile or two, and they're all somewhat apples to apples, but again, not perfect apples to apples. And according to all the different government websites, this one has 200 capacity, 150, 180. If you're like, well, geez, there's capacity for like 3,000. And you start calling and they're basically telling you they're empty. That's giving me some signals that I'm going to have to be a little bit more aggressive and I'm going to have to have everything ready to go so that I can start to hit the ground running. Now, the other thing that I would suggest you do in July, and a lot of centers don't love doing this, but I can tell you that not loving it, but loving the results are two completely different things. If you know that most centers right now are in summer camp mentality, summer camp mode. The weather is nicer, they might get a little bit lazier, they might leave a little bit earlier, some of these people, and obviously you're not going to break ratios, but a little bit more of a lax feeling. So we know that that is currently occurring. What if you were to turn some ads on, on Facebook being an example, YouTube being a second one, that are branding-based ads that are ideally done through video, that are just letting families in the very specific area know that you're open and you're ready to take on new enrollments for fall. So what do you think happens to the centers that then turn their advertising on in August versus you turning it on a month before? You don't have to say now enrolling in the month of July, but you start to get your brand in their minds. You pixel their computer, so they see your ad, you can pixel them if they're interacting with your ad, your video, your website. You get all of that, a little bit of that jump start ahead, so that come August, you've done your competitive research, you know what you're working against, what other centers families might be considering. You have at least a gut feeling as to how well stocked those locations are. That might give you a signifier of you might need to be even more aggressive than you were thinking, much more aggressive, especially if there are a couple of new centers that are opening in an area. Because if they're smart, they come out of the gates swinging. They come out of the gates three, four months before they're opening, and they're not investing $500 or $1,000 a month in marketing. If they're building a new location, if they're taking over an expensive lease, and again, they know what they're doing, and that is not always the case, they're going to be throwing five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 a month at marketing to get the word out. They might have a $30,000 a month payment coming due. And you're not going to have a building sit completely empty. The way you're going to fill it is via marketing. So if you know that you've got a couple of those centers in the area, you've got to get a jump start ahead of the competition. So let's do a recap. First, you're going to do a marketing audit, a marketing 360 audit. You're going to size up what worked, what didn't work. You're going to look at the data. What is the data telling me? What platforms work the best? How was the lead quality on Facebook versus Google versus walk-ins or phone calls? You're going to start to get some additional assets. So you're going to get some more pictures ready to go. Some videos. You're going to look into something called Matterport, which again allows you to do virtual tours of your center so they can go to a particular URL and they can interact with the videos, they can see the classrooms. It's really neat technology. And spoiler alert, you can actually get a free version. It doesn't cost you anything. So you're gonna get that ready. You're gonna get, again, some of these short little videos lock and loaded, ready to go. And you're going to look at your numbers and say, this is what I'm committed to investing. And here are the tactics that I'm gonna start deploying. I'm gonna do Facebook, Google ads. I'm gonna do some TikTok. Now, the chances also are pretty high that you should not be doing this yourself. You should be leveraging an agency like ours at the Parent Marketing Group. But I'm at least giving you insight so that if you have an agency, you're not taking your feet off the gas in the month of July. You're using that month to get a jump start ahead of everybody else. You're turning your advertising back on if you turned it off. That's why we suggest advertising 12 months out of the year. We don't ever like to turn off advertising, including holidays. So why would you run ads on Christmas, for example? A, not everybody celebrates Christmas. B, it has some of the lowest costs by way of advertising. Fewer people are looking, fewer people are spending, and those eyeballs that you're potentially getting are extremely inexpensive. Just more brand awareness. So you're going to get that jump start of your ads on so that come August, you can start getting those floodgates rolling. But especially in August and September, you need to be looking at the data weekly. Now, I 
say at the very minimum every other week, but that's kind of in the less busy time. You got to make sure that you are going to hit your numbers or you're going to start the rest of the year really behind. And that just is not a comfortable feeling. I've been there. We've worked with hundreds of centers that have been there. They're overstaffed, they're bleeding capital because they're paying all these leases and all these other expenses and loans that they took out to make the business work. They're forecasting that they're gonna have 75 enrollments at this location and 100 over there and they're at 50% of that. And all of a sudden you're losing cash. The only way to box out of that situation is through more marketing, more marketing, better marketing, more marketing, better marketing. It's not to start cutting its expenses. It's not to start cutting your marketing. You need to up-level your marketing. If you're not generating enough leads to hit the tour numbers, to hit the enrollment numbers, you need to change up your activities. So those are the activities that I look at executing during this Jumpstart July. The whole point is to be a step ahead. The whole point is when all of your other competitors are kind of taking it a little bit easy the next month, month and a half, you're releasing everything the first week of August. Great ads, you're changing your ads, you're throwing some extra marketing dollars, your tour is completely dialed in, your offers, your follow-up sequences, all of that is dialed. You're not figuring that stuff out in the month of August. Execute a Jumpstart July, and I promise you it will set up for an amazing rest of the year and give you that momentum that you need to just keep pushing forward. As always, Michael Tasner signing off. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. See you next week. Thank you.